Hello and welcome to Anime Animosity. And having last week done the seasonal rundown for summer 2021, it is time to say goodbye to the spring 2021 anime and give my retrospective thoughts on all the shows that I watched that aired in the passing season. So we are here on livechart.me. There will, as usual, be a link in the description below in case you want to do something like this yourself. Okay then. So, first up, we have My Hero Season 5, which I didn't want. So actually, first up, we have Higa Hero. Now, as you can see, the last episode has yet to air as of me recording. However, um, by the time this is up, it probably will have. Um, I have been really enjoying Higa Hero so far. I loved... Up until around episode, I want to say 9, where they did the whole Sai's backstory reveal. That kind of missed a little bit, but it was still enjoyable. And then it picked back up in the past uh, couple episodes. So yeah, all in all, I really enjoyed Hero Hero. Not quite the best show this season. It, so it lived up to my expectations of what I was expecting it to do. But it didn't exceed them in any, in any way. But it was still enjoyable and definitely worth a watch if you were waiting for it to finish. Next up, um, so I'm a spider, so what? Didn't watch it last season. Well, last season, I mean winter. I'm not watching it this season, so moving on. Uh, the second season of How Not Summon the Demon Lord. Now, while most certainly enjoyable, um, if you liked the first season, this you will have enjoyed this one. However, it wasn't quite as good as season one. That's the easiest way to put it. Not only is it shorter, being only 10 episodes, but it was also just, you know... Yes, it was How Not to Summon the Demon Lord, but it felt like it was lacking somewhere. Probably the Etchy, to be fair. There was a lot less of that. Yeah, I'm a sick fuck. Leave me alone. But yeah, it was enjoyable. Don't get me wrong, but definitely less so than season one. So next up, we have probably the second best show this season in Tokyo Avengers. Now... I absolutely love this show. I think it's absolutely fantastic. As I said, it's the second best one this season. We'll get to the best one in a bit. But truly, in in all honesty, watch this show. There's only it'll by the time you've seen this, there'll be the twelve episodes, the end of the first arc. I believe we'll be halfway through what we're getting. I think we're getting twenty four episodes. So while it doesn't say that over here on live chart, I think I've heard that number thrown around. So it's going to be 24 episodes, is what I'm expecting it to be. But it's absolutely fantastic. All the characters are brilliant. The developments the story is going with. It's so good. Honestly, give this show a watch. Even if you are waiting for it to finish, just check out the first couple episodes. Because seriously, you'll, you might not want to wait. You might want to catch up to it now. But seriously, this is a fantastic show. And I will be reading the manga as soon as the anime finishes. Okay, next up is Fumitsu no Aotae. Now, I've heard many, many good things about this show. Many good things. Like how it's really emotional and sad, but... Now, maybe I'm just a heartless monster, but... While I enjoyed watching the first, like, four or so episodes that I watched, I didn't feel any, like, drive to continue watching it. Nor did I feel sad. So I just haven't carried on. Now, will I at some point when it finishes? Probably. Because everybody's saying it's really good. So I at least want to give it a fair chance. Given that it's a 20 episode run. 4 episodes isn't really going to give it a fair representation of what it can do. And what it can say. So, for the time being, if you mention that, uh, I don't really know how to classify my thoughts on it. I haven't really given it the time it deserves, but in the time I have given it, I thought it was just good, it, but it didn't feel like anything special at the time. Maybe my opinion on that will change. Who knows? Okay, next up, something that I maybe have a controversial opinion on. Is it an idea, Nagatoro-san? Um, so, the first, like, five episodes of this were fantastic especially the first episode the first episode i absolutely loved the next couple of episodes were also really really good and towards i'd say about yeah about the first six or so episodes are really good and then like from episode seven till now it's been 
insufferably boring. Like, I just haven't been able to stand it. Like, it's been so boring. Like, yeah. For me, this show missed. It started out really good, but then kind of just went downhill. Maybe that's just me. It probably is just me, because I know a lot of people love this. Um, it's one of the big three Yashik manga. So, this is definitely an unpopular opinion, but for me, I just found the last five or so episodes, well, four, because the fifth one hasn't come out by the time you're saying that, by the time I'm recording this, but I just found it kind of boring. Sorry, Nagatora fans. The show just stopped being for me about halfway through. And that's just how the cookie crumbles. Next up, a show that I was honestly pleasantly surprised by. There's more of, more than one of those this season, but yes. Sento and Haken Shimas. Um, I actually found something out. This is written by the same guy that did Konosuba. So, like, if I'd done that beforehand, I would have had much higher expectations for this show. And to be honest, it did genuinely surprise me with the fact that it wasn't complete garbage. It was enjoyable. It was kind of funny. Like, the setting was great. The characters were fun. They were bubbly. They were all as shitty and bad people as the cast of Konosuba. And that's the selling point of this. Same with the selling point of Konosuba. Is that the characters are all pieces of shit. And to be honest, it's enjoyable. If you liked Konosuba, while you won't, you definitely won't enjoy this to the same level as Konosuba, you'll still enjoy this. So yeah, this actually surpassed my expectations. I didn't watch this show. Moving on. Another show that vastly exceeded my expectations. I've been killing slimes for 300 years and accidentally maxed out my level. Um, this show, I absolutely fucking love. Like, I can't put into words how much I love this show. It's so wholesome and cute. And, like, it's just warm and bubbly. The characters are fucking adorable. It, yes, it's just a Moe Blob show, and that's not, only, not normally my type of thing, but I love it. Uh, Beelzebub is the best girl. Um, fantastic. Like, if you like wholesome slice-of-life shows, this is something you'll absolutely love. Don't look at the fact that it's an isekai and go, uh, it's probably going to be bad then, isn't it? Trust me, this is worth... If you love your slice-of-life and your, like, wholesome comedies, this is really worth your time. And onto another show that far exceeded my expectations. The first core of 86. Now, originally I said that I thought this was going to be hot garbage. Turns out this was easily one of the best shows this season. Like, it was absolutely incredible. It blew me away. The direction, like, it was beautifully directed. The sound design was fantastic. Like, the characters are honestly way better than I thought they'd be. This is what, and visually, this is what happens when A1 gives a shit about something that isn't SAO's most recent season. Okay, this show blew me away with how much better it was than I thought it'd be. So, absolute props to 86. Can't wait for the second core, and I'll probably give the light novels a read after that. Honestly, fantastic show. Highly, highly recommend this to anyone that likes any of these tags, or even doesn't. If if you don't like Mecha, it doesn't matter. The Mechs aren't the big point of this show. It's like kind of how Mechs are in Cookie Ass. Or that that might be a... Eh, I guess. Yeah, sure. But trust me, this show is fantastic. Yes, the Mechs are the main enemy, but don't... But shh, forget that. Watch this show. It's really, really good. Next up. Mighty Mashla Irma-kun, second season. Now, I watched the first four or five episodes of this this season, and... Loved it, and I'm going to wait for it to finish so I can binge it. Because, for me, Irma isn't something I can just sit down every week, watch, and then go do something else. And that sounds weird, because it isn't like a heavy investment show. It's supposed to be like a, a warm, wholesome fucking comedy. But for me, this is something that's much easier for me to binge than wait weekly for. So I'm just putting it on hold until it finishes. Up next, a show that I was probably pretty spot on with its quality, um, Kusoge, or um, Kiwakwe, I guess is what you'd call it. This was like 
It was super, super average. Like, really average. The characters were... As you'd expect. The story was somewhat all over the place. Um, yeah. I didn't dislike it. Don't get me wrong. But it was just really average. No one cares about Seven Deadly Sins. And now on to the best show this season. One that I even made a video on. Card on the top right. Vivi Flora I Song. I mean, what can I say? This show is just fucking amazing. It has the magic of Wit Studios animation. The story writing of ReZero, because it's written by the guy that wrote ReZero. I wish I'd known about that before um, going into it, because then I wouldn't have waited five episodes to start it. But yeah, this show is absolutely incredible. And the last episode hit so hard. That final song, ah, oh, chills, motherfucker, chills. But yeah, I'm not going to touch on Vivi much. Give this show a watch. I've already made a video on it. If you aren't convinced, go give that video. It's not a fantastic video, but go give that a watch. Seriously, this show, incredible. Okay, next up is Osana na Jimmy. Uh, the love comedy where um, the childhood friend doesn't lose. Um, it's been, to be honest, it's not been bad. It's been alright, to be fair. As I originally said, I love the character design. I think the characters are really bubbly and cute. But to be honest, for the most part, that's all it's really got. Yes, the romance, like the harem aspect to it, is there and it's kind of interesting. But does it live up to, you know, what it... Does it meet... I don't want to say expectations because I didn't have very high expectations because I knew nothing about this. But I feel like it falls short in some aspects that it definitely could have not fallen short in if it had just tried a little bit harder. So, this show is enjoyable. It's a nice harem. But, I think it could have been better if it had been, like, refined just a little bit more. Okay, next up, two shows that I said I was going to watch, but then due to predicament of trying to watch them in uh, Shaman King and in Zero, I haven't. Okay, moving on to uh, Koikimoi. This, honestly... Another show that I undersold. Honestly, it wasn't bad. Was it exceptional? No, not at all. Did it feel low budget? Yeah. But for some reason, the voice acting just sounded off. That's one thing I really have to say. But the, the voice work sounded off. Now, I don't know if that's a, the, you know, the director's fault. Um, the voice actor's fault. The software they used to record the voice acting... I don't know. But something about it felt off. But it was cute. Somewhat wholesome. I did honestly enjoy watching this show every week. So if you want like a... Well, a wholesome romance. Go right ahead. It was honestly pretty enjoyable. Now. Fruits Basket is a show that um, in the past couple weeks. Well, I say past couple. Last week. I binged all of the first two seasons, and caught up to the final one. And I am now patiently waiting on that episode 13. And all I can say is, holy fuck, Fruits Basket's fucking amazing. How many times can I say fuck trying to describe how fucking good Fruits Basket is? Because honestly, this show is amazing. If you if you've ever thought, oh, uh, you know, Shoujo is like, it's for girls, I do watch it, watch it. Watch Fruits Basket, or Kaichi Mo Made Summer. But Fruits Basket, fuck me, it blew me away. I originally watched the first episode many, many, many months ago, and just didn't carry on. But then, I watched the rest of it, and it just, well, I'm sure you can gather how much I enjoyed it. And I'm really looking forward to this final episode. Episode 12 was 
Episode 11 and 12 were so fucking good. Seriously, this show, Fruits Basket, amazing. Honestly. Okay, now to not so good of a show. Mars Red. Um, I watched about five episodes of this and then gave up completely because I found it really boring and really dull. Like, it's, that's all I can really say. I just found it boring. And that's about it. I can say that about another show this season, In Yorang, which was also really, really boring. Like, the setting sounds really cool, and the concept of what the characters are is really interesting. And then the story was just boring as fuck, and the characters felt flat and dry. I only watched, like, three episodes of it. I just couldn't get past that. I genuinely felt myself falling asleep while watching it. It... I thought this show was terrible. That's that, really. And on to, I believe, the second to last show that I have to talk about. Yes. So, The World Ends With You, the animation. Now, as an adaptation of the game's story, it does the job, and it tells you the game's story. And to be honest, I think it's animated decently enough. Is it the best way to experience the story? Fuck no, is it? Play the game. And if you can't play the game, watch someone else play the game. There. Because, um... I absolutely love this. I absolutely love, um, The World Ends With You, and I can't wait for Neo on the Switch. This anime falls short a little bit. Definitely does. But if you would rather watch the anime instead of play a game, I have a video on uh, just that on that exact topic, uh, calm the top right, then maybe check this out, but you won't get the full experience of playing the game or watching someone else play the game. And finally, Bishonen Tante Dang. This show, honestly, absolutely loved it. Another initiation work done by Studio Shaft. What's the not to love? Albeit, I'm only nine episodes in. I have the rest to finish. I will get around to that. But everything I have watched so far, I've thoroughly enjoyed. This show, if you like any, if you like Nishio Ison's works like uh, the Monogatari series, Katanagatari, uh, Kubikiri Cycle, give this a watch. This is really good. If you like Shaft, give this a watch because it it has all that Shaft flair. Like this is genuinely really good. I would recommend this to anyone that likes uh, initiation or shaft. And yeah, that's all I've really got to say on the, the, the topic of Bishon and Tante Dan. And with that, we come to the end of the spring 21, 21? The spring 2021 seasonal rundown retrospective. And what a season it's been. Not quite as good as the absolute titan no pun intended season that was winter but still good nonetheless and with that out of the way i've been animosity you've been you and i'll get you all next time for another video ta-ta for now